Hey everyone, welcome to another video. I'm so glad that you're sticking with me and that you're working your way through this series of videos. Please feel free to go back and listen to the other videos if you haven't listened to some of them or if you need to sort of catch up where we are because over the past few videos we've been using them as kind of building blocks of our understanding. And we've talked about in the past purpose and the whole concept of purpose. We've talked about needs and the role that needs have in each one of our lives. And we've also recently talked about beliefs and how beliefs are a major controlling factor in our lives. Well, today I want to try and put a little bit of a bow on the package, if you will, by taking those three things and then talking about how to go about discovering your unique purpose. Because you see, those three words, purpose, needs, and beliefs, are like a three-legged stool. And when we understand and control each one of those, then we have some congruence in our lives that will help us to accelerate our performance as we move toward the achievement of our purpose. But let's stop and review real quickly and say, what is purpose? Well, ultimately, purpose is nothing more than what you want your life to stand for. What kind of a contribution do you want to make to society? What kind of a legacy do you want to leave? And not just uh, not just a financial legacy. Most of the time when we talk about legacy, people are thinking about money. But what kind of a spiritual legacy do you want to leave? What kind of a love legacy do you want to leave? What kind of a relationship legacy do you want to leave? And I think about things like after I'm gone and my daughters are sitting with my granddaughters or my great-granddaughters and they're looking through a picture album and they come across a picture of me, what is my daughter going to say? What's she going to communicate to those kids about who I was, what I stood for, and how I influenced her life? Those are the sorts of things that we need to think about as we think about purpose. And it's all about how do we ultimately want to be remembered. And you can really, really dig deep in order to be able to find the real high quality answers. I mean, this is not a 15 minute process to discover your purpose. You really need to dig deep and take time to ask yourself the difficult questions and really ponder them. And that's a little bit of what we're going to talk about today. I also want you to understand that there are two types of purpose. There is a global purpose and there's an individual purpose. By that I mean that globally I think that all of us want the world to be a little bit better place because we've lived. I think that human beings are created with that desire to make the world a better place and to, you know, to have an influence uh, even if it's a small influence just on a core group of people that's your family. If you're raising children, you want to, your children to have opportunities that are opportunities that you didn't have. You want them to grow up to be responsible, contributing members of society. So there's sort of a global purpose there that we're all trying to achieve. But we also have a unique individual purpose. And I think that discovering our unique individual purpose comes when we start thinking about what are we passionate about in life and what skills and abilities do we have and how can we combine our passions and our skills and abilities to be of service to other people in our sphere of influence. How can we use the things that excite us in life and all of the stuff that we've learned over the years in order to contribute value to our society. So that's the unique purpose. The problem is, is that most people, and I'm assuming a fair number of people watching this video, don't live their lives with purpose. Stop and think about that. How many people do you know, maybe someone intimately, where you're just kind of wandering through life? You're, you know, you put one foot in front of the other every day, you get up and you go through the motions and stuff like that, but you know, life is a drudgery. It's not a joy. You don't feel like you have any real reason for existence other than to sort of get up and plod through the day and you're doing that, you know, for 40 years until you get to retire, hopefully, if you can afford it financially. 
for a lot of people, doesn't matter to them how successful they are or how unsuccessful they are because they believe that they don't have the ability to be able to influence that in their lives. And so what happens is not having a purpose ultimately winds up stealing the meaning of life. And I'll tell you, friends, when that happens, it's, it's a travesty. It really is because uh, Zig Ziglar said at one point, we were designed for accomplishment, engineered for success, and endowed with the seeds of greatness. We are partners with God in creation. And when you begin to look at life through that lens, man, how it changes things. Because when you realize that God put you on this earth to accomplish something, it's powerful. But you and only you can discover why you're here and what your purpose is. So how do we go about discovering our purpose? Well, first of all, we have to look at it and realize its value. Having a purpose in life is like having Fort Knox. It's like having a closet full of gold bars and diamonds. It can mean that much to you as far as the overall value of your life. We have to realize the power that purpose has to create, to drive us, and to help us become better people. One of the things that's neat about purpose is that it's not just about achieving purpose, but it's about who you have to become as an individual in order to realize the attainment of your purpose. And we also have to realize that the impact that purpose can have on success and happiness and fulfillment in our lives. So that's the first thing, is realizing the value, the power, and the impact that purpose can have. And then we have to create a framework with which to discover purpose. We have to start looking at a much bigger picture. So much of us live, so many of us rather, live lives myopically. We're just concerned about what's going on today. We're not concerned about tomorrow. We have to look long and we have to begin to look at the bigger picture. And then we have to begin to develop a physical and emotional mindset about what attaining a purpose would mean to us. You know, it's, it's not a logical process. It's, it's an emotional process that we have to go through. And then we have to have a process by which we can go about discovering our purpose. And there are two, uh, two processes that I use that I found to be very effective and very helpful for people. One is what I call the eulogy. And that is to imagine that after you have passed away, you get to come back as a fly on the wall and attend your wake and attend your funeral. What is it that you would want people to say about you? When somebody gets up to eulogize you, whether it's a friend or a family member, what are the things that you want them to say about you? How do you want them to remember you? Now, that's a simple way to be able to go through and just start making notes and, and turn that into the story of your life. The other way is to develop a, a picture in your mind of what you're going to look like when you're 95 years old. And I mean, really think about it in detail. What's your skin going to be like? What's your posture going to be like? Things like that. Take yourself through the intimate details. And if you have any questions about what you're going to look like then, a good thing to do is go back and grab your picture album and look at your grandparents and your great-grandparents when they were up in years. That's a pretty good, gives you a pretty good idea of what you're going to look like. And then once you've done that, begin to get an emotional, in your heart feeling of, what you're going to feel like at 95 years old. And once you develop that picture, that mental picture, and you can begin to feel emotionally and physically what you're going to be like at 95, then stop and think about being terminally ill and having less than 24 hours to live. At that point, at that state that you've created within yourself, look back over your life and ask yourself questions like, what are the things in life that I've accomplished that I'm most proud of? 
What are some of the things in life I've accomplished that I'm absolutely ashamed of? And as you ask yourself those kinds of questions and you begin to dig deep into how much money have you made? How much time have you spent with your family? What kind of relationships did you have with your children? And things like that. You can begin to find the threads of who you are as a person. And when you begin to grasp those individual threads, you can start weaving them into the tapestry that will be your life and that will define your purpose. Discovering your purpose is a lot of work, but I guarantee you, my friends, if you'll do it, it's worth it. Thanks again for watching. God bless you. Go live your life on purpose, and I'll see you again soon.